In part one of Getting Started in Music Maker 2019, we saw how to get Music Maker installed, updated, old and new versions activated, and sound pools, instruments, presets, and features downloaded and installed. In part two, we learned what a project was, looked at the demo project, audio drivers in the program settings, moving around on the screen, and exporting to an audio file. If you didn't watch these parts, you may want to do so before continuing. The demo project that we looked at in part two is made up of sound pool loops that come with the demo, not ones that are installed under sound pool loops. So let's get out of here and make our own project. Click on File, New Project. We now have a blank project. Nothing's in the arranger. Look at the upper left. By default, the name of the project is new.mmm, unless you're just playing around and don't intend to save the project. Go to File, Save, and Music Maker will open the File Explorer. It should open to the default location as shown in the program settings. If it doesn't, navigate to it or to another folder where you want to save your project and change the project name. This always happens if the file name is new, otherwise you'd have to use Save as Project. I strongly suggest that you give your project a name other than new. I'll change the project name to Test1 and save this. Now the project name at the top left is changed. Note that the default BPM or beats per minute is 120 and the time signature is 44. If you click on the 44, You'll see that you can change this to 3 quarter time, 4 4, 5 4. This list is also available under File, Settings, Project Settings, General Options. These are the only choices that you have in Music Maker. For the beat, click on the 120 and change it to what you want. Clicking on BPM opens a dialog box where you can change the beat or tap it out to set it. To the right of this is the metronome that you can toggle off and on by clicking on it. To the left is a counter. Click on it to see what it means and for other options. We already saw this earlier, remember? For now, I'll leave the defaults alone. I'll reopen the other windows so that we can see the keyboard at the bottom and the sound pool loops at the right. We'll start with some sound pool loops. I'll select Best of Ambient Volume 1 Drums. Note that the BPM is 80 not 120. By the way, to see those columns, BPM, length, etc., click on the parameter gear at the top, select optional rows, and turn on the fields that you want to see. I'll drag the first drum loop onto the arranger. The BPM automatically changes to 80. Now I'll select the bass. Look at the bottom window and you'll see the pitch row, numbered 1 to 7, with one of them highlighted. In this case, it's 6, and under Harmony, we see A minor. If I select 1, the pitch or harmony is now C major. I'll drag the first loop onto track 2. You can also double-click on the loop to insert it. Immediately, we see the guitar symbol at the left of the track, the title is bass, and at the top is the pitch. If you have the plus or premium presets, you'll also see a drop-down that allows you to change the pitch. I don't think you'll see this in the free version. Look at track 1. For some reason, Music Maker does not change the instrument icon or track name when a loop is added to track 1, and you may have to do this yourself. If I change the pitch for the loop to number 5, which is the 5th of C or G major in the loop selection window, and either drag or double click on the first loop, duck, it gets added to the end of track 2. Look at the top of the arranger, and a G has been added. Now let's try a brass loop. I still have number 5 or G major selected. If I double click on this, it'll try to put it at the beginning of track 3 in the zone of two bars where I already have an instrument in the pitch of C. A message pops up asking if the pitch should be automatically adjusted. Click yes. Now I have a problem. The loop is 8 bars long, whereas the other ones were only 2 bars. Look at the top. It's proposing C and G. I don't want that, so I'll shorten the loop to two bars by dragging the right end to the left, and all is well. Another way to do this is to use the scissors in the top menu. This puts a cut at the location of the playback marker. Select the right part and delete it. Or if you have the plus or premium features, select this object, 
Pop down the pitch bar at the top and select G. The pitch of the object changes to G. You can see that the object name was changed to Sax Solo Am Dry 5, which is G. Let's look at these objects on the arranger. These are loops, and by definition, they can be extended, and they'll loop. If I grab the bottom right handle of the drum loop and drag it to the right, it extends itself and is actually looping. Look at the tool icons in the top menu. There's a magnet. This is a snap feature. Click on it to open the pop-down and to see the snapping options. By default, it snaps to a quarter note, so dragging the right side of a loop will snap to the increments set by this tool. Now, drag the bottom right handle of the G major bass loop to the right, and you'll see that the G bar at the top is extended. Let's look at the other handles of some objects. There's a bottom handle at the left, and dragging it to the right shortens or lengthens the loop, just like the bottom right handle. To the left of the bottom right handle is a pop-down table. Open this, and you'll see some options. Note these for the future. In the middle of a selected object is an orange line with three handles. The left and right handles can be dragged for fading in and out. The middle handle is the object volume control, and raising or lowering it adjusts the volume of the object. Double-clicking it resets it. This is only one of several ways to adjust the volume of an object. Okay, I think you've got the idea. To see more about loops, watch my tutorial about using sound pool loops. We only have audio loops here. There can also be MIDI loops available under some of the sound pools. Click on the parameter gear at the top, and you have some choices to display both audio and MIDI loops. Audio loops only, or MIDI loops only. There's also an optional row called Type that will show symbols for audio and MIDI loops. Here's an example. Deep House, Touchdown Miami. Note the icon. I'll drag this onto an empty track and click on the parameter gear in the track header. This opens the parameter settings, or actually the instrument associated with the MIDI file. This one is the drum engine. Of course, this loop isn't going to sound very good with Best of Ambient, so I'll delete that. Well, that's it for this tutorial. You should now be able to get the program going, have an understanding as to how a project works, import loops onto the arranger, make some adjustments to them, and much more. There's a lot more to Music Maker than what I've shown you so far, so keep watching tutorials, reading the manual, and trying out new things in test projects. Coming up next in part 4, we'll look at creating MIDI objects using VST instruments. Thanks for watching. Till next time, make music.